A volatile relationship, a shattered marriage, and a supernatural turnaround that changed everything. Anna Kendall reveals the mistakes and expectations that was causing her marriage to implode and how God transformed it and showed her and her husband the life languages. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, each year, thousands of couples find themselves on the brink of divorce. Can those marriages be saved? It might surprise you, but the answer is yes. With the help of our special guest, you'll find out why. But first, join me around the table is April Simons. How are you? I'm good, and I love this special guest. Well, She's you know, special. we really had a call out from our audience that want to hear more of the ladies at the table story. Oh, ooh, we got ooh. some stories. So we, Dorothy Newton, we did your story. <laughs> yes, we, we did, did your story. We and, did. But you know, I think it's important for people watching to understand we're just ordinary people. We have yes. all, yes. we've all been through some yep. stuff. We yes. had some things happen. Yes. And, but you know, the, the end of the story for us is that God is so faithful yes. and he's going right. to be that for you too. If you um, just ask him into your heart today. I tell you, that's so important. Mm -hmm. Rachel Ann Brown, how are you? I'm doing good. Yeah. And I'm excited we're talking about this. I love our guest today, and her story is so encouraging, inspiring, and yeah, it gives um, hope. It gives hope it that does. your marriage can be saved and it can be amazing. Rebecca Lamb Weiss, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> Surrounded with some of my favorite people. That's so right. I'm just a happy camper over Interviewing here. Interviewing one of your favorite people. I know. I yeah. was saying this is like one of the more fun shows for me because yeah. I know this person, and, but it's funny to have her on this side of the table yeah, I know. and not that side of the I table. Know. She's usually over here. But, but now, now she's over She is over here. Yeah. <laughs> Cindy Murdoch, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. Yeah. This is going to be so inspiring. It, yeah. It's really a great inspiring You're going to have your moment in that seat too. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what it's, all great. Great. it's all good. <laughs> Anna Kendall. That's who yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Thank so you. So glad to have you here today and sharing your story. Well, long before she was helping others save their marriage, hers was in great peril. She and her husband, Fred, had a marriage so volatile that it turned their world into chaos. But God had a bigger plan. So take us back, Miss Anna. All right. To marrying Fred Kendall. <laughs> okay. The you know, Marine. The Marine. That's who right. had a list <laughs> of <laughs> things that yes. you were to do and et cetera, et cetera. When Fred and I got married, he was just off active duty in the Marine Corps. <clears throat> then he stayed in the Marines for a number of years. But how did so, y'all meet? How did you meet? And what was your first thought of him? Okay, and, I was, I was working Give for, us the story. I was yeah. working for Mary Kay. Give I us was, the details, yes, Anna. Okay. Okay. You look like a Mary Kay girl. I was Mary Kay's assistant. Yeah. And wow. one of our... Uh, I read about you in a book. That's right. One of Mary our consultants Kay. then uh, was Fred's sister. And she said, my husband, I mean, my uh, brother has just gotten off the active duty in the Marine Corps. And he's coming to Dallas to see about going back to law school. He'd gone to law school a year in California before they needed more Marines in Southeast Asia. So anyway, he was off the Marine Corps and he came in to take me to lunch and he was so cute and so <laughs> funny and we had such a great time that it just started right there. And you know, the interesting thing is I was attracted to Fred because he was stable and he was responsible and he was mature and he was, you know, he had life together. He was funny, had a great sense of humor. Great sense of humor. And he was attracted to me because I loved life and I had fun in life. And you were bright and I was colorful. bright and joyful. <laughs> yes. And then when we got married, the things that attracted us to each other became threatening. His, oh my goodness. his organization became controlling. Rigid. His mm -hmm. responsibility became very very controlling and organized and, and critical and <laughs> You know, and the more he tried to change me, it was like I was his new recruit, and that was his job, and my job was to resist. So initially, you know, we had this kind of conflict going. Tell so, about this story, like the list that he would wake you okay, up. Okay, the morning after our honeymoon, Fred wakes me up 
and it's still wait, dark. Wait, wait, how was your honeymoon, though? Oh, it was great. <laughs> it was great. Oh, it was fun. This is the yes. morning after. This is the morning after we get back and we're settled in. Back into real life. It's back time into... for the regiment to begin. <laughs> yes. So he wakes me up and it's still dark outside and he has me this list that says 0500. <laughs> oh. Wake up, have coffee. And he's got the coffee pot plugged in. He's got little rolls heating. And then it says um, 0515 uh, sex. And then it was like 05. We laugh and say 30, and it was, <laughs> <laughs> and it was calisthenics. And then it was zero six o'clock, I was to shower and then go um, fix breakfast. And I looked at him and I said, I don't do mornings. And I threw, that, <laughs> I threw it away and went back to sleep. And that was his first clue that we might have some communication <laughs> issues. And we had a few little issues. things like that, that that just continued on. And Pretty soon, after a couple of years, Fred was more critical, and he stayed in the Marine Reserves, and he got promoted to the position, he was captain, and then he was major, and so he was in charge, and you know, he was just very controlling, and I was resisting all of that. Sure. And you were, you were not happy. No. And you didn't know the Lord? No, I did not. Did Fred know the Lord at he, that point? You know, Fred was saved as a little boy in a Baptist church, and he never strayed from it, but what he had at that point, without the Baptist and the Holy Spirit, he had the rules of religion. He didn't have the victory. Right. So I just saw rules everywhere I looked. And you rules. didn't have any relationship no. with the Lord. And I, of course, he's... He's praying for you at that point, or no? Not much. Not yet. Not, not no. yet. Okay, so then you really took your eyes off of your husband. Yes. You didn't want to be in that relationship right, right. anymore. And did someone else come along that got your yes. attention? Yes. Actually, Fred got transferred to California. We were living in Houston. And life was just suddenly so much easier without him. You know, I mean, it was like, okay, I can function now. Ooh, yeah. And I was really not in a good state emotionally or anything. And I tried doing secular counseling. It wasn't working. So I thought, I'm just going to divorce him. So I told him, we're going to get a divorce. And in the meantime, he got the baptism of the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> moved back to Houston to... God told him if he would go back to Houston that he would show him how to save our marriage, how to save our family. And so he comes back to Houston just filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'd sold the house, moved into an apartment with our son, and he was not going to give me a divorce. So I thought, okay. And then another man came in. So then I started seeing this man. And then I had an affair. And I thought, Fred's not going to give me a divorce. I'll make him so miserable he'll want to. Mm. But the harder I tried to do mm. that, because now <clears throat> he had the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I would say things like, I would say, Fred, I have no feelings for you, except maybe absolute hatred. Mm. And the sooner you're out of my life, the better. And he would say, Anna... I want to love you, honor you, provide for <laughs> wow. you, protect wow. you, cherish you all the days of your life. You are not my enemy. And I would say, <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing, buddy boy. You're sure my enemy. <laughs> and the sooner you're out of my life, the better. Well, now, did you were living in an apartment. Did he move in he with moved you? In. Oh. Oh, goodness. That, he moved in. Oh, my goodness. He moved in. So you sell the house thinking that you all, you're going to get divorced and all and this kind I, of stuff. We're in America. Yeah. You can get divorced, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And he but did. he moves in. <laughs> and he moved in. But he didn't <laughs> like all your boyfriends. No, he didn't like my boyfriends at all. He, we, we have laughed and said he was very narrow-minded. But, but, but it was, you know, we can laugh about it now, but it was painful. It was tragic. I was so miserable. Not only that, but he tied up all of our money. He got an attorney and he said, if Anna wants the divorce, I want to see that that's all she gets. I don't want to reward her for destroying our family. Mm, wow. And I was furious. I thought this red hair was was there for one reason. I was <laughs> angry. Okay. And you had your red blouse on at the same time. That's <laughs> right. I was angry. Yeah, yeah. He would take tapes of the Bible and put them up to my bedroom door and play tapes of the Bible all night. We went through the Old Testament and the New Testament, and Derek Prince deliver us from demons. <laughs> so y'all were in separate bedrooms. Yes. That was, that was a tape recorder. Y'all yeah, don't know I what that is. Say, you remember that <laughs> with cassette, the cassette tapes? Yeah. Tape. And he would put it outside your door, and you would open it and turn it off. Yeah. And he would... Oh, come back and, and turn, turn it, it on. on. And he would turn those tapes over. It was like he was on, he was on guard duty. He kept it going. I went to our liberal pastor and I said, Fred thinks there's such a thing as demons. And he said, oh, Anna, we know that's just psychosis and neurosis. Of course, there's no such thing. And I said, he thinks you can get baptized in the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. And he said, oh, no, that's just, that's just illiterate people. But I was meeting people who were 
you know, tremendously educated who were believing in the power of the Holy Spirit. So I was very confused. So Fred was praying. Yeah. And he had everybody he knew praying. And God was <laughs> sending people across your path and yes. making you question. Yes. But this went on for a while. It did. How long did it go on? About a year and a half. Wow. A year and oh, a half. Oh, that's a long time to persist. Uh, yes. Good for him. Do you think he ever felt like giving up? Of course, I know Fred oh, Kendall. Oh, you know, he did. You know, there was that determination within him. That is like... <laughs> Hardcore in It is. But that let me tell you like, what is amazing about that. Fred always loved me. That had to be a God thing because yeah. I was not lovable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but he always had this love for me wow. and he believed that marriage was something that God was, it was worth fighting for. Yeah. He had learned how to fight That's in true. the Marine Corps That's and true. he just transferred that over into fighting the spiritual battles mm -hmm. and he just didn't give up. And he didn't up. see you as an enemy. No. That was the first thing God told him. He said, identify the enemy and Anna is not your enemy. And I mean, he identified the enemy. He knew it was the devil and that's where he directed his fighting. And to me, he was precious. He didn't like things that I would do, you know, like he didn't like how I loaded the dishwasher. So he started doing it, you know, and just, <laughs> so one day he took Michael, our son, and they went to church and I stayed home and I was having a glass of wine and I was trying to find an old movie to watch. And I was just so miserable and I thought, I can't escape this man, you know, I, I can't get out of here. And, but yet I saw strength in him that I admired, but I never let him know that. Yeah. And so this Baptist pastor came on, John Bazzano in Houston, and, he's, and I'd gone to see the movie The Exorcist and it really scared me. <laughs> and he said, there really is a devil, there really is such a thing as demons, and he said, I want to talk to you about what's true about that movie. And he said, it came down to this, there are only two positions from which you can approach life. You're over here with God because you've selected Jesus Christ, or you're over here with a devil and you'll spend eternity in hell. There is no middle ground. And it was like, that so shocked me, I almost stopped breathing. I thought everybody's in the middle ground, mm -hmm. unless you're a missionary or a, a prostitute, or you know, then you're to those <laughs> extremes. Everybody else, and he said, there is no middle ground. And if you don't choose Jesus, you will spend eternity in hell. And I'm telling you, I got scared. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like all of those prayers and all of that just came upon me in that moment. And I did one of those, oh God, if you're, if you're really there, I will try this Christianity thing, but I don't really believe. Hmm. And that was wow. the extent of my commitment. But, but you did pray it sincerely. I was sincere. So, I mean, there are people watching that. You, you can pray that prayer. Yes. Oh, oh, God, if you're there, I need you to show up. Yes. Reveal yourself Reveal to me. Reveal yourself. I don't really believe it, <laughs> but if you're there and reveal yourself to me, if you are, then show me and yes. he will show himself. He did. He strong. did. And, Fred, and so what happened at that moment? Well, Fred came home that day from church and he wanted to move to Dallas and to work for this Christian man and uh, in, a, in the hospital management business. And uh, I said, Fred, okay, I'll move to Dallas with you, but I don't love you. So I said to God, I'll try Christianity, but I don't believe I'll go to Dallas, but I don't love you. And they both took me at that little bit mm, of commitment, wow. brought yeah. me to Dallas. God planted us around spiritful Christians who could take us places to be healed and delivered and all the things that we need. Prior to this, about a year before, we had a baby that died in delivery. Mm -hmm. I have a picture of Jesus holding a newborn baby that oh. someone painted out on my desk. I see that as my baby, my baby girl. But at that time, I didn't know Jesus. And I just, I was so overcome with guilt that, you know, what had I done wrong to deserve this? And through all of this, God just just revealed himself, let me know that he loved me, that my baby girl is there waiting for us. And, and the healing took about you know a number of months for us to get through everything. Then God had us open a Christian bookstore called Maranatha, The Lord is Coming. And <laughs> for 12 years, I read Christian books all the time because <laughs> I had to read them to sell yeah. them, you know. <laughs> and so I was really into that. And God started using us to share our testimony because after about six months of living in Dallas, surrounded with these Christians, I said to Fred one day, I said, you know, I really love you. Oh, wow. I am really so thankful that you fought for this marriage. Wow. If he had just walked away, yeah. who knows what would have happened to yeah. me. That's mm -hmm. true. But because he fought, it 
it saved our marriage and it saved our family. You know, so God is so good. And I'm just so thankful that Fred didn't give up. I'm so thankful he didn't. Um, Rebecca, I wonder if you just take a moment and pray with those that are watching right now that prayer, a prayer similar to what Anna prayed, where you're just like, wow, that's amazing that God could do that for her. I wonder what he could do for me. He wants to do something spectacular for you, and that is have a personal relationship with you. Would you lead us, and we'll just uh, pray after you. Absolutely. You can say this prayer, believe it in your heart, and it's just as simple as that, receiving the gift of salvation. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I confess, I confess I'm, I'm a sinner. sinner. And I believe you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I repent for my sins. I repent for my sins. And I ask that you'd wash me clean with your blood. And I ask that you wash me clean with your blood. I ask that you would be the Lord of my life. I ask that you would be the Lord of my life. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And I ask that you'd fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I ask that you'd fill me with your Holy Spirit. I submit to you. I submit to you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus', Jesus name. name. Amen. 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 April, is it that simple? It's that simple. And it, and the great thing is you can come as you are. You don't have to yes. clean yourself up. Right. You, and it's okay. I like what you said, Jenny. You know, you, they may not believe, is this God real? Yes. Can he really do that? Just try him out. Just I mean, if whatever you're gonna, little bit of faith you've got. If you're going to let somebody use you, might as well be God. Yeah. If you're going to depend on somebody, might yeah, as well be God. Yeah, the one who created you. Yeah. The one who knows every part of you yeah. and knows the gifts and talents mm-hmm. that he's placed on the inside of you. Why not connect to the mm-hmm. one that created you today mm-hmm. and say, okay, God, I've tried everything my way. Let's try it your way. So when you prayed that prayer, did did Fred notice a change in you? He and if had, so, he, what did he say? He had a spark of hope a when spark. I said, I will move to Dallas with yeah. you. Mm-hmm. And, he, and he said, what happened? What brought this about? And I told him the, the kind of prayer I had prayed. Mm-hmm. And he just took that as a sign from God. Yeah. And he just marched on with faith. And, you know, through the years, and we've been married almost 60 years. So through the years, uh, Fred and I, but primarily Fred, probably counseled 10,000 couples. And we would seldom see a couple that had a marriage as bad as ours. Mm. And they would have trouble having faith for theirs. But God just gave us faith for marriages Mm. to just let them know that, you know, nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is too far gone for God. Nothing has God licked. You know, he's not taken by surprise. Before I had this experience with God, Fred's mother and sister came to visit us in Houston. They have a very unique family that no one in their family has ever been divorced. My family, cousins, aunts, uncles, my parents weren't divorced, but almost everybody else was. So to me, divorce was a way of life. To them, it wasn't. It was You fought for the marriage. But they came to see us, and they said, Fred, you ought to let Anna get her divorce. Now, it took a lot for them to wow. see yeah. how bad we were for them to say that. They, they said, she's miserable. You're mi- there is no hope. You need to get this divorce. And the typical thing, you're still young enough. You can have, a, you know, more <sighs> life here, which is kind of the typical thing to say. And Fred, it was like God gave him this message. And he said, let me ask you something. If Anna were back there at the bedroom, she was real sick and dying from cancer. And I said, I'm just going to divorce her. We never go out. She doesn't want to have sex. We don't have people over. She's not a good wife, never cooks a meal. I'm just going to leave her. What would you think? And they said, well, we think that'd be terrible. And he said, what Anna has is worse than cancer. Mm. He said, I may be the only person willing to fight for her salvation. Wow. And they very quietly got in their car and drove back to New Mexico. And years later, they said, we feel so guilty about saying that when we see what God has done. But Fred just had that Marine Corps determination. Well, and the fact that y'all went through that and then there was a process, I guess, of you really becoming a wife to him again. Oh, yes, yes. And loving him the way that a wife should love a husband, et cetera. And learning that. And learning that. I didn't know that. that. You would teach that. Yes. Later on to thousands of couples. But talk a little bit about that process. It wasn't an overnight where... No, I remember being at my bookstore one day and I had this this headache and my spiritual mom walked in, the one who had been taking us to places to... And she said, Fred, come over here and pray for Anna as head of the household. And I thought, what? 
<laughs> I didn't know that the man was the head of the household. Wow. You know, that's how yeah. liberal I had become yeah. in my thinking. So, yes, I had to learn from the basics all the way up. And after Fred and I got our marriage was healed, we still didn't know how to communicate. We were talkers, and we thought, this is communication. And it was through this learning to communicate God started revealing to us about the communication styles, the seven life languages, how to understand one another. And that was also a process of God developing And it came that. from the Word of God. Tell people what the life languages are for people that are watching. Okay. Like, what are they talking about? All right. The Lord showed us that there are three categories from which people communicate. And we call them intelligences. They're either people who think first, who feel first, or act first. We do all three of them, but we do them in sometime a nanosecond and sometime Sometimes it's several minutes before we do the other. And under those three categories, there are various communication styles. There are two emotive, the people who feel first. There are three cognitive, the people who think first. And there are two action oriented, the people who go into action before they're aware of what they're thinking and feeling. So it was a process of God showing this from Romans 12, and they line up perfectly with the motivational gifts, mm -hmm. which is the gifting from God the Father. Yeah. Jesus gives us the gifting of the fivefold ministry. The Holy Spirit gives us the gifting of the Holy Spirit, gifts of the Holy Spirit. And Father God gives us the gifting from Romans 12. So we just, that's why they work. It's, they come from a mind that's greater than ours. We were just struggling to understand each other and to help other people understand each other. And God very graciously revealed it. And again, I must say it was Fred, as we're working on this and we're speaking at churches and we spoke at the 700 Club and all these different places. And I said, Fred, I'm tired of working on the languages. Let's just make that one of the little things we teach because I've got this other teaching I want us to do. <laughs> Influencer, I was ready yeah. to move on. And he said, Anna, this is from God and we're staying with it and we hung in there until we got it to where it's they're using it mostly all over the world now mm -hmm. we're in various countries I think it's 26 countries and and hundreds of thousands of people have taken the profile which reveals this so if we had given up yeah. and walked away yeah uh, God probably would have given it to somebody mm -hmm. else, maybe, but it would have been different. I love it because it is literally one of the most helpful tools yes. in helping people understand each other better, yes. helping yes. people communicate better. But the thing I love is like God took your pain, your greatest yes. pain, and he turned it into your greatest purpose. Yes, he yeah. did. He took your pain and turned it into gain. He absolutely yes. For the did. kingdom of God. Yeah. So um, that we got to do another whole show on the life languages. But what did you find out about your communication style and Fred's communication style that was okay. so different? Fred is, first of all, a mover, which is an action language. They are lead, follow, or get out of the way. Right. That's and, Fred. <laughs> yeah, that's Fred. And so it was like, make things happen. There's a lot of Marines that are <laughs> movers. I'm yes. Sure. I know that. Yes. Make yes. things happen. Yes. Right? yes. Yeah. Make I've things happen. That. Mm -hmm. And that's his... Do now, something. Yes. <laughs> Even if it was wrong, just do something. Then his second language I is I influencer. I know that language now, too. <laughs> yeah. His second language is influencer, which is a motive language. And they're the people that, that talk and encourage and... and motivate and they, they're they people 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 and that's and probably very what y'all connected on we connected there because yeah. that yeah. was my first language so my first was influencer his second is influencer my second was producer which is a cognitive language but it's kind of a, a gracious language of of you know caring and giving and things like that but it's it's very cognitive they think things through before they then the third language is mine and fred's is both responder fred is tied for responder <laughs> shaper as his third language wow and responders are those that yeah, okay. care yeah, right. and yes, like Rebecca, <laughs> like like our Cindy here, they care and care. So we all have all mm -hmm. seven of these languages. Mm -hmm. We just have them in descending order, and often our last language might be our spouse's first, mm -hmm. or one of our children's first. We don't love that child any less, or that spouse any less. It just takes a little more effort, but that effort can make it a stronger relationship. So as you begin to develop life languages. Uh, it really turned into something so much bigger than you could have oh, imagined. Yes. And of course, you and Fred begin to counsel yes. marriages. Who would yes. have ever thought yeah. the worst marriage yeah. <laughs> would become the marriage that would help so yes. many? Yes. Tell us some of the stories of people that you were able to help based on what you and Fred went through. You know, there have been 
people that would have alcoholic problems or drug problems or abusive problems. And there have been times when we would recommend separation for safety until a person could get some help if there's abuse. But still, God can take that and yes. bring healing. We just have, have never seen situations that were impossible with God. What we did see is if the marriage wasn't going to work, then we would encourage them to get counseling so they could minimize the trauma to the children. Mm -hmm. Get counseling so you can at least be in agreement with how you deal with the children. The worst thing a couple can do is is try to get the kids to take sides right. and, you know, right. say that against. Thing. Exactly. Yeah, so, you know, we've gone the gamut of all of them, but I would say at least 80% of the marriages we worked with, there was reconciliation. I remember Fred told me that um, God can do anything, but you've got to have two willing hearts. Yes. yes. And if you have one that says yes, yep. and the other that says no, then... Which is how we were for a long yeah, time. Yeah, there's nothing really that you can do to penetrate that. I mean, there are people watching that have oh, gone yes. through divorce, Absolutely. and they're hearing your story, and they're like, but why that couldn't happen for me? I mean, they shouldn't feel the shame no, and condemnation. None whatsoever. Yeah. You know, divorce is not the unpardonable sin. You know, God loves the divorced person. God hates divorce, but he loves the divorced person. And he is the God of a second chance. And he does give chances to people to remarry and to move on. And, you know, our story is that God healed it. But we did have to go through a lot, a lot of trauma to get to that place. And not everybody has a husband like Fred who's been trained to fight the yeah, battles. Right. And sometimes it is easier just to walk away mm -hmm. and allow God to heal you and to move on to the next phase of your life. It doesn't mean that God is through with your you or your ministry or your happiness. I mean, God restores. He restores some sometimes with the marriage. He restores sometimes with other ways, but he never gives up on us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't think people should good. ever feel guilty because their marriage didn't get healed because God will still heal them and use them. It is not the unpardonable sin. God loves the divorced person. how long person. have you been married? Almost 60 years. 60, 60 years? years. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, it is it's an amazing story. And I'll tell you what, I uh, pray that it's encouraged you today and that you have hope no matter what your situation is, that God loves you and he can lead you and guide you into what you need to do and how you need to do it. And I mean, he can strategize with you, but the most important thing is that you accept him into your heart and life. And if you pray that prayer with Rebecca, uh, yes. make sure and call us and let us know because we'd love to send you a free book entitled Now What? Mm -hmm. Because this is the most important decision that you can make. Well, we're out of time, but I know that some of you are watching and you think your marriage is too far gone, but God can bring healing and restoration. God can use you to touch the lives of others. If you're watching, you'd like for someone to come into agreement with you about your marriage experience, uh, experiencing restoration, healing, and freedom, then that's why that number's on the screen. We would love to pray with you, encourage you today. I want to thank Anna for sharing her and Fred's incredible story. That Fred. I love him. <laughs> and just pray, Father, fill me with your spirit. I want everything that you Amen. have for me on this yes. earth so that I can fulfill my purpose. Well, for more on the Life Languages, you can visit lifelanguages.com. Cindy. If uh, yes, people call, yes, we yes. can help them Absolutely. take the test. If you were touched by today's Table Talk, let us know. You can leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We always love hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, ladies. April, you didn't say, did you say one word the whole time? I or did. She did. Okay. You, you did. Okay, you did. Okay. Bring it and call out April right Cindy, before did you say something? <laughs> did, you, did everybody say something? Well, it doesn't matter. As long as Jesus says something, something. and the guest says something. As long as, as Jesus says something. They're just here to hold you up. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Thank you so much for watching. These ladies are crazy. Bye-bye for today.